Hi, good morning everyone. This is uh, Rick Marrera and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is about uh, 10 in the morning and uh, it's about 63 degrees outside and I'm back here at the garden entrance and I'm just going to show you some Hoyas and some orchids today. So we'll start here with moved some of the stuff out of the greenhouse because the lows will be in the 60s so this this should be great uh, this is a Hoya cast Hoya species cast really nice long veiny leaves it does not like to dry out so even though I have it in a fast draining mix I have to water a lot more often or else it'll tell you the leaves kind of get droopy so Keep an eye on that one. And this is Hoya SR209, I'm sorry, 207-13. And uh, it's doing pretty well here. Endured all the cold nights when it dropped down in the high 30s, I think we had one night. That was in the high 30s. So the cold temperatures and a little bit of sunlight bring out some nice coloring and uh, Hoya foliage and over here you have Hoya sunrise going into the neighbor's yard and it seems to be doing really well there and uh, has a nice red sheen to it and another one I'd like to tell you about is um, Hoya pentaflevia I never thought uh, it was one that would turn red but again with the cold weather uh, and a little bit of sun it's really got a nice red patina and really like it and you can see this one has more so it gets really nice wash there and it's happy with its uh, friend there Hoya Carii variegated they've been growing on each other for about a year now and uh this side doesn't get any sun, so the leaves are a little more, uh, less blush. So yeah, it's a nice Hoya. And the flowers are really pretty yellow color. Um, and it likes to stay wet, so I water it. It's fast draining mix, but I water it, uh, yeah, see, I water it about every other day, even in the winter. This is uh, Mexicanum, the philodendron. Really like the backside of the new leaves that turn all, all red. And the Gloriosum did pretty well all winter. No sign of stress from the cold. Excited about that. And this begonia did pretty well. As, uh, as you can see, it's putting out new growth. Crotons. So we are pretty lucky here in Florida that we have very few days that drop below 40 degrees. So a lot of the tropicals survive this kind of uh, temperatures. The more tender stuff I bring into the greenhouse or um, uh, the garage or in the house. And uh, again, if you've seen my videos, you've seen this Baruna twist in bloom for over two months now. Uh, yeah, the phalaenopsis that I've been uh, hanging on the wall here seem to be putting out new spikes, as you can see there. So that's a good sign that the weather is getting a little warm. And then some dendrobiums with some new spikes, but they're kind of known to bloom in the winter. There's another Phalaenopsis spike. And this Catlea hybrid is just flowering all winter long and it has at least uh, probably another seven or eight sheaths. So it continuously blooms and it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty nice looking. Uh, I like the orange and brown color to the 
flowers and reds. So this one is really, really easy. I just throw in a handful of fertilizer twice a year and that's it. Don't move it. And this is the Carii Melalufla hybrid uh, from Gardinos. And uh, it is way, way up in the tree. I don't know if you can see it, but it's reached the canopy. Um, my hope is that it'll cover that whole tree, a palm tree trunk with um, Hoya. That'll be interesting. So let's just go back here in the backyard in a little bit. Let's visit Swiffer's Tail. Uh, as you can see, it did pretty well in the winter. I did throw in some um, pesticide because there were some mealy bugs getting in there and uh, it seemed to have taken care of that so it's doing really well it's a beautiful morning back here in the backyard so i just decided to let the chickens out for a little bit and uh, i will show you some of the anthuriums i brought out to enjoy this uh beautiful 70 degree uh, morning. So over here you have Anthurium Magnificum. I got it about four months ago and it's still potted in their media and it looks like it's happy. So I'm just not going to repot it until it's um, bigger, probably in the summer. And this is Crystallinum beautiful leaf again same potting media that I bought it in and this is El Chaco Philodendron El Chaco red and it put out a new leaf in the greenhouse and to show you how red it gets quite beautiful and again hopefully it'll get quite big so I can repot it this summer and here's a uh, painted lady philodendron. I actually like this one quite a bit. Uh, it gets really nice yellow tones to it. And, uh, Hoya species 33, AP 1054. It's actually been growing all winter long. Uh, even when the temperatures have dropped down in the 30s a couple of times. So it's a fighter. It's a verticillata type. Oh yeah, and it actually gets some nice splash to it. And the begonias, I'm really surprised how cold tolerant they are. Uh, they've been doing, they've been out here all winter with a lot of highs in the 40s, so they're doing well. So I think. The chickens are out, so Swiffer is not a big fan of them. And she just goes and hides out. Let's see what other Hoyas I can show you today. Yeah, this is Hoya. It was not well known, but it does get a lot of splash, and I guess splash is the, the trendy thing now. Uh, and it's pretty consistent with all the leaves. Uh, they get really splashy. It's a verticillata and it's EPC 271. Really nice, easy to grow Hoya. And my Hoya Stevo over here is doing pretty well. And it gets very large, splashy leaves. Pretty dark too, which I like. And the flowers are really really fragrant so it's a, a very easy hoya to grow if you like splashy fragrant hoyas and, and hoya anarchy it gets really nice color to it in the winter Okay, let's go over to another area here in the garden that I 
have hung some Hoyas. This is Hoya marginata. It really gets a lot of uh, bronze color in the sun, but this is a pretty shady area. This is a Philodendron Dark Lord. And then over here I have a Ciliata. A nice Hoya Fungi. And this is Hoya RB, RB Dick, EPC 196. Here are some of the orchids I picked up at the Carl Smith Orchid Festival. This is a Gre an Algrecum, and it's the Darwin orchid, they call it, because apparently it's this moth with a 12 inch proboscis that pollinates it. I picked up some of these novelty phonopsis. They're quite beautiful and they are fragrant. And apparently they bloom constantly from the same uh, spike. So hopefully it'll be nice and easy to grow. And this cat layer. Been in bloom for like three weeks, I think. And I think I'm going to end with uh, Hoya Matilde. Doing well here. With some of my hybrids that I'm growing out. Yeah, so it appears that uh, the worst of winter is over here in Florida, and we expect temperatures in the 70s with lows in the 60s for uh, the next 10 days, I believe. So we escaped another bad winter. And this is another orchid that I picked up at Crawl Smith. I don't know if you can actually see, it's almost green, lime green. And I believe it's called RLC Young Kong. I like it because the flower is quite large. It's bigger than my hand. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please uh, like and subscribe. And I will create more of these videos and post them throughout uh, the year. Uh, once a week I try to do and give you an update on what's going on back here. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.